Hey kids, welcome back to another day of reading. In today's lesson, we're going to go back and reread Emmanuel's dream. But before we reread it, we're going to talk about those power words that make this book so special. Then we're going to review what it means to inference so that as we read, we can use those inferencing skills to help us understand the text better. Come on, let's check out the power words. The first word we are going to talk about is the word disability. Say it with me, disability. If you have a disability, you have something special about you that can make it harder to do certain things. For example, my friend has a disability, so he uses a wheelchair to move around the school. Say it with me one more time, disability. Great job. The next power word is the word hero. Say it with me, hero. A hero is a person who does something brave to help others. For example, the firefighter is a hero because he helps people when their homes are on fire. Say the word one more time, hero. Our last power word is the word respectful. Say it with me, respectful. Someone who is respectful is polite and kind to others. For example, the children are respectful and raise their hands before talking. Let's say it one more time, respectful. Wow, those are seriously some cool words. Now, let's talk about why we're reading this book today. Today, we're rereading it to make inferences. Remember, when you make an inference, you're using the text and pictures along with what you know to understand it better. Even though Emmanuel's dream is a biography, a true story, we can still use the text clues and what we know to understand it better. Let's get reading. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he'd be useless or worse, a curse. His father left, never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort. She named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities could not go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, he hopped to school and back, two miles each way on one leg by himself. Let's stop and think. What does Mama Comfort think about him going to school? She must think that school is important. How can you tell? What do you see in the pictures or what do you read in the text? I noticed on this page it says most kids with disabilities could not go to school, but she made him go even though it was far. That tells me it's very important to her. At first, nobody would play with him, so Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot he earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would he be able to join them? His friend Godwin pushed him so fast so that he could balance. Over and over again, he fell hard, but finally he rode. How does it feel when you finally do something difficult? I know that makes me feel proud. What inference can we make about how he feels? What text clues do you see? I think he feels proud. You can tell because he's smiling in the picture as he's riding his bike. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market, and his sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Support means to help them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. 
He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Why does Emmanuel need to leave his family? Remember that word support? In order to help his family or to support them, he needed to earn money. So he needed to go to the city to earn money for his family. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When he wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning, when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg, and don't give up. By the next morning, his beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, nobody would help. They thought that his plan to bike around Ghana was impossible. So he wrote to the Challenge Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. Why do you think Emmanuel's plan, or why do you think people thought his plan was impossible? Well, I know when I ride a bike, it takes two legs. They probably thought it would be too hard for him to ride with only one good leg. They sent him a bike, plus a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. Then Emmanuel tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his foot in a flip-flop, attached to the pedal, and he rode. He pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through rainforests, over rolling hills, across wide muddy rivers. He pedaled past Odom forests and plantain farms, and through the market city of Kumasi. He pedaled as trucks roared past on the narrow highways, and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of its flag on a shirt printed with the words, the pozo, or the disabled person. Why do you think Emmanuel wears a shirt that says the disabled person on his bike ride? I think he wants everybody to know that even though he's disabled, it doesn't mean he's unable to do things. He's proud of it. Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The farther he rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered, able-bodied adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and came outside, some for the very first time. The young man, once thought of as a curse, was now a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. His success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things. One person is enough to change the world. In our lesson today, we use clues from the words and pictures, as well as what we know, to make inferences to help us better understand our reading. Thanks for reading. I'll see you soon.